Swinburne University of Technology. Hi everybody. In this video we are going to be looking at the paired samples t-test. We'll start by looking at what is paired data, which is the kind of data where we require this particular test. We'll look at the SPSS output and how we structure a report to answer a hypothesis or a research question when we have paired data and we're using this test. So with paired data, Paired data will normally come out of either a re repeated measures or a matched pairs design. So this is where we may look like we have two sets of numbers, but each of the sets of numbers is somehow linked. So a very common example of paired data is where we have a before and an after. So for example, if we were maybe seeing whether a new exercise regime increased the jump height of AFL players, then we would measure how high they could jump, we'd get them doing the exercise, and then we would measure how high they could jump again. And so we've got a before and an after. Someone who could jump high already before the exercise is probably going to be jumping high afterwards, and someone that couldn't jump as high, they might have improved, but it's still probably lower. So we don't want to treat these as two independent sets of numbers, because it's the same person and two different measurements. So when we have this paired data with the before and the after, what we do is instead we focus on the difference. So with my jumping example, instead of looking at average height before and average height afterwards, we work out the difference for each person. So what is the difference between the jump before the exercise and the jump after the exercise? Once we've worked out these differences, these differences become what we actually do our t-test with. So our paired sample t-test, it's where we've got the repeated measures or occasionally the matched pairs design. So pretty commonly a before and an after if it's a repeated measures. And we're looking at the differences. And so it's in fact very similar to the one sample t-test. And what we're doing is we're saying, well, if we didn't think that my exercise regime had an impact on jump height, then the average difference should be zero. Some people might have a slightly higher measurement or a slightly lower measurement for their before versus their after, but overall we would expect the average difference to be zero. So our paired samples t-test is really just a one sample t-test and seeing whether the set of differences is equal to zero. In SPSS we have a separate uh, paired samples t-test analysis that we can do, um, and when we see the output though we'll see that it's very similar. So we have a couple of requirements for the for this course. We're really assuming that these are always going to be met. Uh, if we were doing this in practice, we would need to check. So first one's a pretty obvious one that the dependent variable is measured on metric scale. So if we're looking at means and we're looking at differences, then it needs to be metric. This is no good for categorical data. Uh, we would be assuming that the measurements for each participant are independent of one another. We know the before and after for a particular person are linked, but the height that one person jumps shouldn't ha have any effect on the height that someone else jumps. The other assumption is that the underlying distribution uh, that the population data, uh, the numbers come from, is a normal distribution. So a bell curve not too skewed. For, this, for our exercises and for our assignment, we're taking this as a given. So we're not going to get too caught up in looking at this assumption. So here's our SPSS output. You'll see that we have two tables. The first table tells me about the before and the after individually. So for this particular one it was looking at hypnosis and whether hypnosis uh, would decrease the number of cigarettes that someone smoked. And so you can see we've got a before and then we've got an after. For each one we've got a mean, we've got a standard deviation. You'll see that when it says sample size 20 and 20, we need to remember that's actually the same person. So we ask the person how many cigarettes they smoked before the treatment and then after the treatment. So even though there's two 20s there, altogether there was only 20 people. So our sample size is only 20. When we come down to our second table, now we've got the information about the differences. So you can see that our difference has been calculated by number of cigarettes before 
take away, number of cigarettes after. The first box gives me the average, the mean difference. So on average, the difference between the befores and the afters was 9.3. We can see it's positive, so that's telling me that the before must be higher than the after. So this is telling me that there has been some kind of decrease. The before is bigger than the after. But when we get to the end of the table, the p-value will, will tell me whether this translates into um, something that occurs in the population as well. So we've got our average difference. We're going to need this when we write our report. We've got a confidence interval for our difference. So here we can see we've got one negative and one positive. So this is actually telling me that when we look at all of these differences, on average the, per the people who have undergone this hypnosis will be smoking between 3.7 cigarettes more and 22 cigarettes less after their treatment. But the really important one that we need to look at is our p-value. So here's our p-value on the end, 0.151. So remember when we're looking at a p-value we want to determine whether the test is significant, whether there is actually a genuine difference in our population. We're looking for p-values that are less than 0.05. So in this case we can see that 0.15 it's not less than 0.05, it's not significant. So even though there was a difference, this difference wasn't a significant difference. On to our next slide, and so here's our report. You'll see that it's very similar to the reports that you've already been writing. So we start with a hypothesis. We then describe our sample, so in this case random sample of 20 smokers. We provide our sample statistics, so the average number of cigarettes uh, smoked after, an average number of cigarettes smoked before. We then quote the figure for the difference between them, so there's our average difference of 9.3 from the lower table. We have our statement of significance, so remember p-value 0.151, not significant. We get our figures out of our test table, so we have our degrees of freedom, we have our T statistic, we have our p-value, we have our confidence interval telling us about the average difference, and then we have our conclusion. So since the test was not significant, our conclusion is that there was insufficient evidence to suggest that the hypnosis reduced the number of cigarettes smoked. So a very, very similar structure to the all of the other reports that you've already been writing. Uh, the piece that gets missed most often is this piece here where it says the difference in the mean cigarettes, in this case because it's cigarettes, and quoting the mean difference. Students will quite often write the first part with the means for the two, uh, the before and the after, but they'll forget to put in the mean for the difference. Okay, so let's have another look at another example. So in this example, uh, we've got some researchers who are measuring how long people are spending preparing meals and how long they're spending doing dishes. And they've hypothesized that people spend more time preparing meals than doing dishes. So because it's two measurements for the same person, it's paired data, so we know that it's appropriate to do a paired samples t-test. Here is our output. So you have the PDF of these slides, so you'll be able to go between the scenario, the last slide, the slide, and the next two. And in these next two slides, we have some questions. So what I would encourage you to do is pause the video and have an attempt of these questions by yourself and then you can restart the video and we can go through the answers to them. So we have four questions on this slide and then we have a few more on the next slide. Okay, so looking at these questions, our first one, what is the researcher's hypothesis? This particular scenario it's quite easy for us. If we backtrack, it was stated very explicitly in this particular scenario. So 
When you're asked to state a hypothesis, it is important to think about what is being measured because sometimes you might have a hypothesis that uses slightly different language from what we are perhaps actually measuring. In this case, what we're measuring is how long people spend and the hypothesis was about how long people spend. Uh, sometimes the scenario might be a little bit more subtle, you might need to think a little bit more carefully about what what kind of words you use to describe your hypothesis. Okay, so our next question, uh, what kind of experimental design was used? So I actually already mentioned that. So we've got the same person and we're asking them how long they spent preparing meals and how long they spent uh, doing dishes. And so since it's two measurements with the same person, it's a repeated measures design. So part C, what sort of hypothesis test would we need to produce a te uh, to test this hypothesis? Well, we know it's paired data, and it's probably a pretty easy question seeing as we're doing a video about the paired t-test. So paired t-test, paired samples t-test is what we need to be using. Part D, in the sample of 100 people, what was the average difference between the time spent preparing meals and the time spent doing dishes? So if we backtrack to our SPSS table and remember the box that tells me about the average difference is this one here. So remember the bottom table tells me about the difference and this one here, so 22. We know it was in minutes, so people are spending 22 minutes more on average preparing meals than they are doing dishes. Okay, so our next question, is the researcher's hypothesis supported? Give the relevant statistics. So remember, any time we want to confirm, uh, check whether a uh, hypothesis is being supported or not, the figure that we're looking at is our p-value. While we're on the table, we'll also answer f, so f was to interpret the confidence interval. So if we go back to our table, and so remember, Whenever we're seeing the SIG, here's our p-value. So our p-value 0.016, so it's smaller than 0.05, so remember that tells me that that is a significant test. And so it is telling me that yes, in fact, in the population, based on the sample, we do believe there is a, a genuine difference here between the average time spent uh, doing dishes and preparing meals. Our confidence interval goes from 4 to about 40 and so that's telling me that on average people are spending between about 4 minutes and 40 minutes more preparing their meals than they are doing dishes. Okay so our last question was to write a report so again I would encourage you pause the video and see whether just using your textbook remember you can um, in the exam you will have a a sheet of note paper that you will be able to take in with some model reports so it's okay to look at your textbook uh, or look at your notes to so that you remember the structure of how to how to write your report uh, but I would encourage you to pause the video and actually have a practice of writing the report and see how close your report is to our model one so if we have a look at our model report here Again, following the same structure as all our other reports, so starting off with our hypothesis, we then describe our sample, we quote our sample means, we state the name of our test, we state what our test is actually looking at, which is the difference in the mean time spent, we quote our sample, our uh, mean difference, and our standard deviation for the difference, so they came out of that bottom table, we state whether or not it was significant, and remember our p-value 0.016 was smaller than 0.05, so it is significant. We quote our degrees of freedom, we quote our t-figure, quote our p-value. We then write a sentence describing our confidence interval. So on average people spend between 4 and 40 minutes more preparing meals than they are doing dishes. And then we finish with our conclusion, and with this one it was what we expected. So remember the hypothesis, people spend more time 
uh, preparing meals than doing dishes and that is what our test showed. So as expected people do spend more time preparing their meals each week than they do spend doing dishes. So hopefully this has been helpful, you've done some good practice. Remember on Blackboard in the interactive room and in the textbook there's more examples for you be to be able to practice uh, writing reports, answering questions about the paired samples t-test. This has been a Swinburne production.